Morgan Freeman is one of the most recognizable actors in Hollywood. Yeah, what, what drew you to this project? Why did you want to be a part of this film? Money, 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 money. The 84-year-old star has been in over 100 movies and has been a star on the big screen for over three decades. You do have the greatest voice in the world. Uh, what are your tips? What's your secret to your, your great voice? I don't have one. Tell you the truth, <laughs> it's just luck. You can do anything, just about anything you want to do, but I stress the word want. And they should know, after all, they are Hollywood legends. His powerful voice and calming demeanor have landed him roles well suited to his character and ability to portray somebody else. Despite his recognizable traits, Morgan wasn't always well known. The now 84-year-old actor caught his first big break in 1968 in a Broadway musical called Hello, Dolly, and later starred in the children's television series The Electric Company. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna bring in the power. We're gonna light up the dark of night like the brightest day in a whole new way. We're gonna turn it on. He co-starred with Bill Cosby, Rita Moreno, Lee Chamberlain, Judy Grobard, and Skip Hennant. The Electric Company was a success and ran consecutively during the early 70s while Morgan was a cast member, before he eventually left the show in 1975. His co-star spoke highly of him. He stayed in contact with Rita Moreno, and the two developed a strong friendship. One of the show's other co-hosts, Bill Cosby, also stayed in contact with Morgan. The two would occasionally cross paths later in their careers. Bill is best known for his role in his hit television show, The Cosby Show, which ran for eight seasons during the mid-80s to early 90s. Morgan was born on June 1, 1937, in Memphis, Tennessee, and was raised in Mississippi by parents Mamie Edna Revere and Morgan Porterfield Freeman. From a young age, Morgan showed interest in the performing arts. At the age of 12, he won a local drama competition and decided to pursue a career in acting. Growing up, Morgan had a passion for acting, but dreamt of being a pilot. He would often daydream about flying planes in class. His fantasies of being a pilot were during the time of World War II when Morgan was just a little boy. Yes, I decided by age 15 that I wanted to be a jet pilot because I got in a lot of trouble in school flying. Teachers droning on and I'm, I'm, I'm climbing out 15,000 feet. <laughs> uh, and then I went into the Air Force because uh, I really did want to fly, and it was the quickest ticket out of Mississippi to elsewhere in the world. And I learned very quickly that that wasn't going to happen. I was not going to be a jet pilot, and that I was not cut out for the military. Between flying imaginary fighter planes and acting, Morgan would frequent his local movie theater whenever he had spare change. He loved movies as a child, just as much as he loved planes. When Morgan graduated high school in 1955, he enlisted in the United States Air Force after turning down a drama scholarship from Jackson State University. He served his country for four years before resuming his passion for acting. Due to the hierarchy of the military, he realized he wasn't cut out for the military. He would much rather act and fulfill his other dream of becoming a star. Do you have any tips, any voiceover tips for people aspiring to sound like Morgan Freeman? Uh, yeah, don't despise to sound like Morgan Freeman. Uh, that's that. I think that's a mistake. Uh, and, and no, I don't. I don't know of any any tips except for one thing. One thing I can tell you: if you're looking to uh, improve your the sound of your voice, yawn a lot. Yawn a lot. Yawn a lot. Yeah. You know why? Why? Tell me why. It relaxes your 
throat muscles. It relaxes your vocal cords. And as soon as they relax, the tone drops. The lower your voice is, the better you sound. So if I yawned a lot, yes. I might start sounding like Freeman. No, but you would certainly get a deeper voice. The young Morgan wasn't born with his iconic voice. In fact, he once possessed a strong Southern accent. It wasn't until he enrolled in acting school that he learned to hone his voice, since that would be his main tool for acting. Morgan's instructor, Robert Witten, taught Morgan the fundamentals, allowing him to lower and relax his voice, making sure he understood elocution, diction, and breath control. Did you have a Southern accent? Serious. <laughs> you must have. Yes. Yes, it was bad. First time I stood up in his class and opened my mouth, he said, hold it, hold it. What's your name? And I said, uh, it's Morgan Freeman. He said, it's not Step and Fetcher. <laughs> and we go, Phew. Uh, so far, I've been sort of laid back and easy about it, you know. Of course, you're here from New York because you're doing a play in New York and you had to leave the play to get here. So tell me about that. Well, uh, I left Frances Sternhagen there <laughs> with my understudy and uh, she's doing, you know, her part there. And so um, I'm just looking forward to getting back. Over the next decade after graduating, Morgan would star in several Broadway shows performing on stage. These performances prepared him for the vigorous work he would do, starring as a cast member in the children's TV show, The Electric Company. After several roles in lesser known productions, Morgan finally landed a role that would put him in the limelight, starring in the 1987 film, Street Smart. All right. Uh, you've been an actor for many years, you know, you've done a lot of uh, theater and movies and the whole thing, and all of a sudden you get this great recognition for a wonderful performance in Street Smart. Yeah. How do you feel about that, uh, all this coming your way at this time? Well, you know, they say things happen when they happen. They happen in their own time, and they happen for their own reasons. So I'm feeling quite well about it. Um, I'm prepared, I can tell you that. <laughs> you have your speech ready? No speeches, no. Uh, well, uh, how important are awards to you? Uh, well, I'm going to sound a little funny here, but um, uh, awards for best actor aren't very important at all. There's no such thing as a best actor in this business, you know. You can't, you can't call yourself the best actor. You can't even allow anyone to call you the best actor, you know. His role as a street hustler pimp earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. This achievement placed him on the radar of several producers. Morgan continued his career starring in more hit films and steadily began building a name for himself as an actor. Now, what would you say makes a great director? Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way? Yeah. Is there any one director that you want to work with that you haven't yet? Yeah, that's more than one. Like who? Yeah. I haven't worked with Mike Nichols. I haven't worked with um, Barry Levinson. I mean, I don't like to call them names because there's a list of them, you know, just right on down the line. Now, do you think that a really good director can turn a bad actor into a good director? Nope, no, no. Morgan Freeman has had a bright and varied career over the last few decades. 
Despite his age, he has consistently provided excellent performances in all of his roles. In 1989, Morgan's career was bright. He starred in four major films, including Glory, Lean On Me, Driving Miss Daisy, and Johnny Handsome. He is a nominee for the picture Driving Miss Daisy in the, the leading actor category. Say hello to the press. Uh, hello, press. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, I haven't introduced your lovely oh, lady. This is my wife, Myrna Kali Lee. Hello. Um, am I not supposed to stand here and be extemporaneous? <laughs> no way. How do I feel? Uh, whelmed. A bit whelmed, you know. Um, I don't know. It may not. You know, you go from whelmed, it might slide back, or it might, we'll see in a few days, won't we? You're supposed to, yeah. not, you're supposed to not anxiously desire to win, but... Uh... No, I don't anxiously desire to win. What I anxiously desire is not to lose. <laughs> Glory was nominated for five Academy Awards and successfully won three of the categories. Morgan's performance was recognized and praised by the Washington Post, and his co-star, Denzel Washington, won the category for Best Supporting Actor. Well, that might not be living, but it sure as hell ain't dying. And dying's what these white boys been doing for going on three years now. Dying by the thousands. Dying for you, fool. I know, because I dug the graves. And all the time I'm digging, I'm asking myself when, when, oh Lord, is going to be our time. Well, time's coming when we're going to have to ante up. Ante up and kick in like men. Like men! Denzel and Morgan had met in 1979, a decade before the release of Glory, on the set of the theater production Coriolanus, a Shakespeare adaptation. Over the years, they would develop a deep respect for each other and a strong working friendship. Denzel has expressed his respect for Morgan, and Morgan has reciprocated it. Morgan narrated several historical documentaries before making his directorial debut in 1993. Bofa was a story about a South African police officer during the apartheid, starring Danny Glover as the lead. Morgan directed the film alongside writer Percy Mutua. The film was well-received, and Morgan was praised for his straightforward direction. The following year, Morgan was formally recognized for his moving performance in the film, The Shawshank Redemption. Although it is now regarded as one of the greatest films of all time, the initial release of the film didn't do so well. Talking about being influenced by film, the single, which is out this week, yeah. Mercury Summer, you say is influenced by one of your favorite films? Yeah, which is? Yeah, yeah, Shawshank Redemption. Um, it's, it's just loosely based on, on this place called So One To Know, um, which is the character in Shawshank Redemption, uh, for anyone that hasn't seen it, is um, he gets imprisoned, falsely imprisoned for murdering his wife. And he's put in prison for... M decades. Decades, yeah, like 30 years. And, uh, and he just dreams of breaking out of prison. With a budget of around 25 million, the film earned a measly 16 million, leaving the production out of pocket. Despite this, Morgan Freeman was nominated for Best Actor at the 67th Academy Awards. The original character in the novel the film is based on was a white Irishman. Morgan received the role as part of a recommendation by the producer of the film, Liz Glotzer. And the decision was justified by Morgan's outstanding performance, described as quietly impressive and moving by the New York Times. Morgan had almost given up his acting career nearly a decade before his casting in Shawshank Redemption. He had even considered becoming a chauffeur. He was a struggling actor without any meaningful roles for two years. He was like, okay, you're human, you screwed up, and you need to try again. Many of them were mentally ill and had to keep their eyes open at night for fear of being raped, mugged, or harassed. First day is hard, and then after that, when you start talking to people, it gets easier. I'm an art therapist, and that helped me with the kids. Sometimes you get kids who just sit there and stare, don't say a word. But if you put out some clay and start molding it, a kid can't resist picking it up. It might start out making fierce objects like dragons. 
kids are good with those kinds of metaphors. They don't have as many ways of hiding as adults do. As they start to work through their problem, they make creatures that are less and less fierce. Working on his craft, Morgan began capitalizing on his deep, comforting voice. Morgan voiced over several documentaries during the early 2000s. By this time, he was already an established Hollywood actor. In 2004, Morgan won his first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Million Dollar Baby. Mr. Friedman, congratulations. Thank you, Patrick. Well, now that you are an Oscar winner mm -hmm. and everybody's favorite president, do you think they're finally going to let you get the girl? <laughs> Good question. Mm. Um, no. <laughs> no. But, but I think that uh, uh, we're working on a, a couple of pieces um, where I do get the girl, actually. Real truth, yeah. Yeah. It's about time. Thank you, sir. Thank the you. film was a success, and so was his performance. Not only did he receive an Academy Award, Morgan also won a Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Actor in a Supporting Role and was nominated for the same category in the Golden Globe Awards. It occurred to me that uh, winning the nomination is uh, probably the height of it. You can just about as far as you can really reasonably go. And after that, it's pretty arbitrary, you know, because, I mean, how can any of us be best? Who can? You know? Morgan's success and influence were put to good use. In 2004, he helped form the Grenada Relief Fund to help aid those affected by Hurricane Ivan, which terrorized the island earlier in the year. His work with the fund has allowed it to grow and evolve, eventually turning it into what is now known as Planet Now a preventative organization whose mission is to provide resources for those living in areas affected by natural disasters and extreme weather conditions. Outside of Morgan's successful career as a movie star, he was a family man, a devoted father, and a husband on more than one occasion. He was married twice between 1967 and 2010. Morgan and his ex-wife, Jeanette Adair Bradshaw, were married from October 22, 1967 until November 18, 1979. Morgan and Jeanette had one child together during this time. Morgana Freeman and her sister, Dina, Morgan's stepdaughter from Jeanette's previous relationship. Their marriage began to deteriorate and they eventually divorced on November 18, 1979. Morgan met and fell in love with Myrna Carly Lee, a costume designer and art director, and married her on June 16th, 1984. Hi, Weaver from Extra. Hi. 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 It's nice to meet you. That's Good. Myrna Carly Lee. That's my wife. Nice to meet well, you. Well, it's the lady. Well, I understand you have a cold, so we, we won't keep you out here too long. First of all, I want to ask you about your outfits because you're looking very dapper tonight. Thank you very much. Very nice. How do you decide what to wear? Not the normal tux? Yeah, I just, you know, I say, bring me something to wear, and she does. So that's, you know. I'm Miss Jessica. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you do a nice job. Who dresses you? Did you pick she this does. outfit? She's a costume designer. You know. Oh, are you really? I like to play in clothes. Yeah. Let me ask you about the Blockbuster Awards. You've been to so many ceremonies. How is this one different? How is this one different? We haven't been there yet, so I don't know. Did you come last year? No. No, you didn't? No. Well, what do you think of all the awards shows? Do you think they're too many, or? I, when there are too many, nobody's going to come. So you keep on coming? Yeah. All right. Have a great time. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Interesting that the, in the story, in the Stephen King story, Red is an Irishman with red hair. Why is that interesting? Well, it's just interesting that uh, somebody can cast you in that part and it, it works perfectly. Okay. 
but I think we all just let that go and pretend that that's normal. Yeah. You know? That way Hollywood doesn't think that they're doing something big. <laughs> mid-2000s saw the release of several cult classics and blockbuster films, all furthering Morgan's career. Seeing the film in IMAX and seeing yourself six stories high, is that, is that weird? Is that a bit strange? No. No, I mean, well, no. It's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, I dreamed as a kid of being in the movies. So you're always taken back when you see yourself, always taken back right? when you, to when you dreamed, you know? So say, hey, Ma, look, I'm there. In 1995, Morgan and his business partner, Lori McCreary, an American producer, founded their own production company, Revelations Entertainment. They're known for their films, Along Came a Spider, levity in 10 items or less. <laughs> 2009 saw the release of the biopic Invictus. Lovely. Are you well? I'm very well, thank you. Morgan, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Now, there must be a hundred million films you can make about Nelson Mandela. Why did you pick this one and why did you think this? I didn't pick this one, this one picked us. It just dropped into our lap. It was a perfect venue, perfect, uh, a perfect story uh, to depict, I think, Mandela, who he is, how he is, how he thinks, uh, how he operates. It was, it's, it's all incorporated in this little story. That is a story I often tell which I want to repeat here. That it would have been so easy to just let the country slip into civil war and, and it could have been really a, a, a mayhem. And the unique part of it is the fact that he saw this opportunity when nobody else did. The Africans require, want the franchise on the basis of one man, one vote, they want political independence. We have made it very clear in our policy that uh, South Africa is a country, a country of many races. There is room for all the various races in this country. But uh, you don't have to have education in order to know that uh, you want certain fundamental rights, so you have got aspirations, you have got uh, claims. It has nothing to do with education whatsoever. And I think the time has come for us to consider, in the light of our experiences in this stay at home, whether the methods which we have applied so far are adequate. The film was based on the 2008 story Playing the Enemy, Nelson Mandela, by John Carlin. The biographical sports drama occurs during the 1995 Rugby World Cup after the apartheid abolishment. I have warned our boys that they are playing against world champions, a very good team. But I'm sure that uh, we have a very good chance of uh, emerging victorious. Morgan portrays Nelson Mandela, president of South Africa, after being imprisoned for 27 years in Victor Vester prison and the struggle to unite the nation and ease racial tension. And presumably you've met him a number of times. Yes. What was it like the first time? Uh, try and imagine meeting somebody that great, that well thought of, that high up in the, in the um, human psyche. Uh, meeting them for the first time, you know, you're pretty much tongue-tied. I mean, what do you say after a pleasure meeting you? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Right, so that was my situation too. I didn't have anything to say after, Carl, this is an honor, uh, you know. Thank you. 
On August 3rd, 2008, Morgan was involved in a car accident when his 1997 Nissan Maxima rolled over while driving at night. It was reported that Morgan had overcorrected his steering, causing the car to spiral out of control, rolling it over several times before coming to a rest. Both Morgan and his passenger, Damaris Meyer, were trapped inside the upturned vehicle and had to be cut free by responders with hydraulic cutting jaws. He was flown to the Regional Medical Center in Memphis, where he discovered his left shoulder, arm, and elbow were broken. After a four-hour surgery, doctors had attempted to repair nerve damage to his arm. It was expected he would make a full recovery. However, he has since been left with reduced mobility in his left hand and is required to wear a compression glove for the paralyzed hand, suffering from fibromyalgia, a medical condition that causes widespread chronic pain due to external factors, which otherwise wouldn't be so damaging. Damaris Meyer, Morgan's passenger, claimed Morgan was drinking alcohol prior to entering the car's driver's seat. She sued Morgan Freeman for negligence. However, it was eventually settled for an undisclosed amount. Known to share his opinion when asked, Morgan expressed his opinion regarding Black History Month. In an interview on the CBS television show 60 Minutes, Morgan said he did not want a Black History Month as Black History was American history. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you moment. do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? No, well, no, 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 come on, tell me. Well, uh, I'm Jewish. Okay, which I'm month is Jewish History Month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh, oh, why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? On Stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace. You know me as Morgan Freeman. During an interview in 1990 regarding the film Glory, Morgan also stated, the black legacy is as noble, is as heroic, is as filled with adventure and conquest and discovery as anybody else's. It's just that nobody knows it. Morgan grew up in 1940s America when racial tension was high. Opportunities for African Americans were sparse. Despite his talent for acting, most of his early roles in theater during this period were all black productions. There is no doubt that Morgan has an authoritative voice, one of reason and understanding. He endorsed Barack Obama's presidential bid, but also made it clear that he would not be joining the presidential campaign. He also provided the voiceover for Hillary Clinton's Democratic presidential video. Morgan has since been used as a powerful asset in media. In 2021, he appeared in a PSA urging people to get the COVID-19 vaccine during the pandemic. I'm Morgan Freeman. I'm not a doctor, but I trust science. And I'm told that for some reason people trust me. So here I am to say, I trust science and I got the vaccine. If you trust me, you'll get the vaccine. This sparked controversy on social media and Morgan found himself at its center with people questioning his integrity.
This wouldn't be the first time he found himself in controversy. In 2018, an investigation was published by CNN in which eight women accused Freeman of being overly flirtatious by making inappropriate comments while on the set of films or at his production company. It sparked a debate during the period when the Me Too movement was trending, and several Me Too accusations had been made against many influential figures. Morgan worked closely with TV actor Bill Cosby during his time on the children's TV show, The Electric Company. Bill was accused and tried for sexual assault after multiple women spoke out against him. Bill was convicted of aggravated indecent assault in 2018. However, it has since been vacated by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Morgan has since apologized to those who were negatively affected by his misconstrued comments, stating, anyone who knows me or has worked with me knows, I am not someone who would intentionally offend or knowingly make anyone feel uneasy. I apologize to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected. That was never my intent. No further action was taken against Morgan, and several journalists responded to the story in defense of Morgan. I have seen Morgan's movies for a long time, long before anyone would actually hire me as an actress. So, you know, Morgan is a, um, an icon and a legend and respected all around the world. And so for me, it was a great honor to be able to work with him. Um, you know, um, sometimes when you don't know someone, you have this, you know, idea of them and um, you get to meet them and sometimes they don't live up to that expectation and getting the opportunity to meet Morgan and work with Morgan has been um, just so extraordinary because the person behind that talent is um, just as extraordinary. He is just a very talented actor and it's, a, it's wonderful to watch him and learn and um, I feel, you know, very honored to be here tonight. It's a, quite an auspicious occasion. Going to Rome? Yeah. <laughs> Not, not many downsides. Not many downsides at all. Now, whatever the film you're doing, everybody loves to watch you. You're a great actor, amazing voice. But do you enjoy watching yourself? No. Really? No. Why? Well, um... You're pretty good. Yeah, but, you know, uh, when you watch yourself, you watch yourself. OK. And you see all the little foibles and things that you do, everything you do. Oh, Jesus. I remember doing that in such and such effect. Oh, come on. No. Morgan has played many roles, from street hustlers to God. He is world renowned and continues to be recognized as the best of his craft. It was uh, five years ago on um, this very stage that my dear and beloved friend Morgan Freeman presented this same honor to me. And it was my wish even then, because I love him so, that I could reciprocate. And well, you know what? The stars aligned. Morgan is way more than just an actor, narrator, producer, humanitarian. This man is a national treasure. Morgan Freeman received the Lifetime Achievement Award for his dedication and work in film and theater. His many achievements and widespread popularity have also allowed him to receive the honor of receiving an honorary Doctor of Arts and Letters degree 
from Delta State University, an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree from Boston University, and he was bestowed the honor of Freedom of the City by the City of London in 2014. He has described himself as an intuitive actor, as opposed to a method actor. In recent years, Morgan has been more conservative with his roles and has valued his time at home. But a solitary life for a movie star who is still on the big screen is a difficult life to lead. I felt like giving a few wrong directions. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a lot of older people, they talk about feeling, I suppose, to a certain extent, invisible as you get older. And imagine when you're... Visible or invisible? Invisible, sorry. Invisible. Yeah. Well, but when you're so famous, can you relate to that? Well, we're, we're trying to be old and invisible. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I spend half my time yeah. trying to be old. I, no, I go home and watch television and do gardening and cooking. And you stay at home. And I do stay yeah. at home. Well, I have grandchildren, so I've got them around me. I live in a very, very small village in Mississippi. <clears throat> and so... Once people got used to the idea that I could come back home to live, it's done. I, I can't walk the streets of New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Rome, Paris, run, London. I can't walk the streets. And that's a little, a little problematic. The renowned actor has since moved to a small village in Mississippi, where he enjoys over 100 acres of land, tends to his bees as part of a conservation effort, and also lives out his childhood dream of piloting. How are you? Fred Medill, Fred TV. From where? Fred TV. It's the best TV around. Fred TV, okay. It's the best. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Can you tell me about your part in it? No, did you see it? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, wow, okay. Well, when you see it, yes. I will be playing the director of Central Intelligence. Okay. I'm probably the only person in the movie that you're going to really want to watch. Okay. Okay? Hey, it's Morgan Freeman, Yeah, course. exactly. That's what, that's what you want to... With over 30 years on the big screen, and as a household name, Morgan Freeman works his way to the top and has left a legacy which is still growing of amazing films. No, I started out at age about 15 to be a, a movie actor. Uh, I sort of, so when I, mean, I went into the Air Force to be a fighter pilot, but that lasted 20 minutes uh, <laughs> once I got in there. Um, no, I was always trying to be a movie actor. I, it, I, this is not a you know, this isn't serendipity, I mean, in terms of being here. This is the fight I've been fighting all my life. It's kind of um, humbling that uh, so many people were so happy that I had been named for this award. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, you're overdue, or maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but that's, that's an accolade. No. 